So let's let's start with the with the, with the coaching coaching itself. Uh, I think. Uh, Let's start with the roles. I think yesterday, if you remember, uh, Oivind, Oivind was drawing a, a picture of coach and his team. His team, and then multiple roles that, that they need ideally to have around them. Do you remember them? Can you repeat them? Do you remember? Friends. Friends? <laughs> yeah. Counselor, yes, coach, sporting, yeah, church, yeah, uh, I think he didn't say that yesterday. Yeah, counselor, counselor. Uh, uh, I think it was the overseer. Uh, what we, yeah, overseer. And what other roles? I sent you the uh, the terminologies part of the coaching and other roles that that coaches have. Maybe upon based on your experience. What other roles do you think there are there? Are there any other roles that, that coaches have or, sh or, or, or actually roles and people around the church planter or his team that they need? Maybe it, it can fit into, into friends, some yeah. spiritual father, someone who is not just into business, into project of the church plant, but actually someone who is ally, who stands so, so can be a spiritual father. There are some other roles or hats that actually coaches can, can have, like a mentor. Mentors, difference between mentor and coach is that it's said that coaches don't have to be experts in the, in, uh, in, uh, in the area that, that of, of the coachee. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's true. In church planning, I think you need some basic knowledge or you need some knowledge. And the best coaches in church planning are those who themselves walk, walk the walk before uh, <clears throat> but I think they need to be very open also with with different models and they have to listen well to where God is leading the church planter not just to impose their own models or their own uh, solutions and ideas but actually help with a very good intentional questions to to find the, the leader his own way based on God's listening to God, listening to context where he is, what's the best for his church plan. But mentors very often are coming from particular experience and they share, they share practices, knowledge. Uh, and, and it could be multiple models, but they, they share expertise. So that's the main difference. Sometimes they, they need a networker or they, or sometimes coaches are also networkers. They, they help coachy or the church planting leader to to network with others so very often you have a you have a church plan with a certain model and uh, they can be part of a learning community with other teams but because they have a particular model it's important to network with them with with others so okay send them just go with your team and visit this church because it does very very similar thing if you do missional communities type of church planting or attractional church or, or what, whatever, uh, or house church or organic models or whatever, it's important also to, to just think beyond a uh, relationship between you and uh, yeah. But just to clarify the roles, a counselor is more oriented on the past, on, on the soul uh, and not on the, on the project. Uh, Generally, coaching we say has double uh, kind of double goals. One is the church planter himself, and 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 on the side is the church planting project. And you can't just spend all your energy on developing development of church planters and their personal development and leadership development or whatever. 
but you also need to look at the, at the project itself. Does it really happen? Do they really grow? Do they really reach, reach, reach people with the gospel? Uh, how, what's the dynamic in the team? What's, uh, you know, do they, yeah, what, what are the dangers? But what is also a relationship, commitment, and all kinds of things uh, that, yeah. The friends, I think that's, that's quite clear, although it's not natural. <laughs> yeah, very often, if they, especially if they plant in another city, uh, with a completely new people, you know, the core group is, is the group of friends. But they are all in the same, <laughs> same struggle, in the same, uh, same thing. So sometimes it's good if they have allies also, maybe in the mother church, or some, some other people who just stand, maybe supporters. Some, sometimes they financially support them in, in that. And it's good to have broad network. Mentor, I talked about <clears throat> the overseer. I think that's that's important, and that really depends. That's that's the mother church role, mother church role, and it's you now in some. I, I don't know how is it in your countries, but very often we have we don't have a mature mother churches who actually really understand what it, what does it mean to be a good mother church. So beyond just giving finances, or, or I don't know how is it how is it in your context? Do do coaches also do that? Sometimes they do if they are part of denomination system, like, and they have coaches, or they have coaches from the mother church. Yeah, but there, there are all kinds of things happening between mother church and this. Very often, and very often it's very, very difficult. It can be difficult. Expectations that the mother church has, and clarity and experience in church planting is different. Is or is non-existent. What's what's your context in that? Yeah. So, but I think if there is no mother church, then coach actually takes much heavier burden. So actually, you. You probably also are in the, into counseling. You are dealing with what's what's in their souls, and you ha you can't avoid it. Just to think that you can't avoid the soul of the of the church planter and not ask about how is he doing with Christ, with with relationship with God. It's it's just a mistake. You know what I see, and maybe let's uh, that we wouldn't spend all the time on that. What I see, of course, one is funding. Another is like overseeing role, really. Coach, especially in, in M4, for example, our coaches meet uh, church planters over Skype every month, and every six months they, they meet them in person, you know, and, and they meet the team, and just so so because you can't coach just the church planter in a in a way you need to see him in context, you need to see him in, sometimes in practice how he works with the team, how what's the dynamic there, uh, but you are not you you never will be that. Enough, enough hands-on for all the needs that the leader that the leader has, especially if you have younger church planters who don't, don't have a good working habits, who don't know how to handle finances, you know, who have, you know, who are newly married, you know, all kinds of issues are there, there are, that, and very often coaches don't have capacity to deal with that. So, so ideally, you know, overseeing, uh, overseeing. Uh, is, is important and uh, for, for, for working habits, for all kinds of things. That, that's my experience. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, and, and they can do it in multiple ways. Yeah, it's from, from working habits to pastoral care to training. So it's especially I see it in, in the Czech Republic when, when a church planter is part of the network of churches or of the good mother church, you know, they, can, they provide them you know, administrative training, you know, finance, uh, fin handling, how to handle finances, planning, uh, training, uh, you know, pastoral care, you know, training, training in leadership, further training, theological even, I think, uh, further, especially if, it's, if uh, these are younger people, and very often they, they are. That's, but of course, in a situation when you have 25 people in the mother church, that's, that's a different, different thing. But I think the roles or the, the areas that people need to somehow to, to have some support. So you, can, you have to be creative how to get that, what they, what they need. 
but or if you are a coach, you, you then need to, to, to deal and there is nobody else. You need to look at also these, these, uh, these other things. So, but if the mother church really understands its role, is supportive, it's the mother church that is planting and really has ownership and has, uh, yeah, ownership. Uh, you know, they can help in so many ways. They can send people, you know, or, or have a temporary supporting teams who maybe for one year, for example, are helping with Sunday services and just to, to free the team to be more missional, have time with relationships with, with non-believers. Very often, that's, that's just frees them from, from just spending all energy on, on Sunday services, uh, although it's not, it's not good to prematurely start Sunday services. You can either have a contract or agreement with the mother church that it's, it's, it's one year, or you can set, let's say, let's, if you can commit that you would help us until we are 35, for example. You know, and we will do everything necessary, but we want to reach that, that, that goal. Could you, could, so, so just, for example, you can define it in a, in, in a different, uh, different ways. Yes. It differs in, in, in most, in many denominations, it differs. Yeah, when you are financially sustainable sometimes, if you have your own elders, if you are considered by the denomination as a separate. So, so the processes are so diverse. But, the, but there are all kinds of issues that can emerge between Mother Church. For example, one example from Czech Republic. You know, the Mother Church pastor wants to prepare everybody for baptism, you know, even in the daughter, daughter church. You know, he, sometimes they are in the same city. You know, so the control, sometimes the control part, and, and they don't want that. They want, you know, so there are all kinds of presuppositions, <laughs> kind of theological expectations that they can have. But let's, let's, let's move on. I think it's not just about the mother church, but it's about the role. Um, and just being realistic, if, if you don't have mature mother churches, very often you will have multiple hats and you need to be clear what hat you are wearing at, at the time. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it's it's diverse. Sometimes denominations have have their own coaches, or they have people who are assigned to 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 take care of leaders or overseeing them. And very often, because there is an ownership issue, it's mother church should have at least one person, either senior pastor or an elder, who who is the the link to the mother church and just who is involved and mentoring and informs both sides because communication is critical very often <laughs> in that. Um, yeah, but if it's malfunctional yeah, with the mother church, then coach needs to just keep the communication flowing and sometimes help mother church to define the role, to, be, to have clarity because then you can prevent some misunderstandings. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the system, how to coach. Uh, uh, in in M four, what what we do is we try to find coaches also who are who are suitable for the model, for example, of the, of the church plan. Sometimes, sometimes. You find personalities or people. Here. So, how how do you match coaches and individual churches? In, interesting, and you, and you need to have coaches who are open, who don't just favor one model. Yeah, who can listen. Yeah, who who are able to to ask also good questions. Yeah, that's whole training for coaches. I don't know how you train your coaches in in actually art of asking good questions. But it's not only about art, art of asking good questions. So, so think about requirements for your coaches. We, when we started, we had no, we had no coaches in the country. So we had to train them. We had to find ch successful church planters who were able to to go beyond their own models, or or at least some some respected pastors and leaders who who are teachable and who can who can. Who, but sometimes it's very difficult for, for pastors or for people who have a strong model in them to, to, to let, that, let it aside or, and, and, and just, just help and not impose or push them into whatever direction they, they, they want. But from my perspective, what is important is building trust and the relationship with the leader. 
So, so before even before we start the actual training, we we built trust or we 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 challenged coaches to go and visit the leader and and buy him a food or, or a glass of wine, just talk and just build a relationship, build trust, because we believe that coaching is 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 a face enterprise actually. Yeah, because church planting is difficult and can be difficult. They need people who believe in them, who believe in the project, who can help them to grow in faith. Uh, because very often they are lonely or nobody cares. <laughs> Not even their denomination or, or, or people are discouraging them. So, so, so this seems less technical, but it's, for me it's really important. How do you build a relationship with a person? It's, it's not just do you deliver, do you, do you follow the plans and do you have the action plans and all kinds of, you know, and development plans. But you need to be human, <laughs> you need to be build trust and relationship. And on, the, on that basis, it's, it's, you can be much more honest and much more open. So, so invest in that. And then you, have, you need to have some system, yeah, how, to, uh, how, often, uh, uh, how often you do it. In, in M4, uh, yeah, be, yeah, we encourage them to have one meeting before the... And then the question of also if the, if the team goes through any process you know, uh, as well. In, in M4, the whole team goes through a training process, four meetings every six months, so the coach uh, uh, coach, you know, just goes along with them, and they already have some action plans on on the place, and he helps them to actually stay on track to do what they they decided to do. So as a coach, he doesn't take initiative and ownership, but it's the team that already is is doing something, and you just keep them keep them on track, and just and see the big picture if they are doing, if they are reaching what they are what. If they are planting church and reaching non-believers, uh, so so once once a month, uh, uh, I think I think it's 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 a good uh, uh, I think it's enough probably if you are if you don't have overseeing uh, role uh, upon you. I think once a month for, for one hour Skype call. Very often I, I asked uh, the leader uh, uh, two days before the meeting, could, could, could you define what maybe the two or three areas that you would like to work on? Yeah, what kind of change or, or yeah, shift in your ministry or in your team in the project uh, would you like to focus most? And then, then we can we can see. I can prepare. I can I can. So I think that's just sometimes helpful. How we build missional DNA into our team, really. How how to encourage also the new people to I don't know to share the gospel. Or just recently, I, I we talked about how how we communicate about who we are. Uh, you know, to through all kinds of means. Or there are all kinds of issues. Uh, but <clears throat> so. And then every six months, uh, yeah, meeting with the team or meeting with the church planter. I meet with the church planter individually, and then I meet with the team. Sometimes I do group coaching, so we focus on one topic that is most relevant for them. Uh, sometimes uh, I, I want to see their services or meetings, because then you, you can watch what's, what's going on. Uh, but especially if you if if you if the team is in a certain process of training, you uh, it's much more helpful because uh, there there is some progress. They have to to deal with with key questions or key key areas that they have to develop in. So so from every training we can training that we have and we have four of them, they have an action plan that they decided on the basis of the teaching and listening to God and interaction with others, they can they, they define priorities for next six months. So my one of my roles is just to help them to fulfill this, make it as measurable as possible, you know, focused on, on goals, uh, and and just keep them accountable. Very often coach just 
keeps them accountable, and that's enough. Very often, nobody asks them asks them about it. You know, just nobody cares. So very often, just basic accountability in what they decided they want to achieve in the next six months is does the job. Yeah, we have also some some assignments in between, uh, like you know, write a vision uh, for for your church plan. So, and there are some key key things that they need to be on place, and uh, so we we help with that. Uh, so, but that's g the general pattern. But if you very often it's 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 good if coaches have. A system of notes, or how you take notes from the meetings. So, so uh, yeah, I I start with the first in first 15, 15 minutes with relate issues. You need to you need to relate to them. What's going on in their lives? Yeah, what's yeah, we are humans, we are not just <laughs> machines. So what's, yeah, and you need to remember what's going on, what about their family, maybe about their kids, what's, what's, what's important. Then we speak about progress. So uh, they relate Yeah, it's personal, just personal, yeah, start, start with that. What's the progress? If, we, if you agreed on, on any goals from previous session, coaching session, what, what happened? Did you, did, you, did you reach that, or did your team reach that? Uh, that's that's another thing that I check at the, at the beginning. You know, were there any goals like, that we agreed uh, from from last session? You know, uh, that's that's another thing. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not speaking about you know how many people became Christians, but like we agreed uh, that you will meet with your team, speaking on 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 the vision. Yeah, can, can you know? I asked you to send it. Uh, to send it in written form uh, by yesterday, I haven't got it. You know what's what's going on? Yeah, yeah. So 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 there are some more specific goals that you agreed on based on on the relationship. Yeah. So, so yeah, short term. So it's not like you know, uh, it's every month. You know, you address it. So progress, and then the third thing is celebrate. What you can celebrate? Uh, what what really went well? Uh, uh, I think it's important in our <laughs> in our negative culture to just to ask them, you know, what's uh, what's encourages them most. Yeah, what's 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 going well. We use the grow model. There are multiple models how to just to take the minutes <laughs> of, or to take notes from the. But actually, either you got the goals. Yeah, this is the goals. You know, from from them in advance. Or you have to ask, like, really, what is most important right now, you know, for the church planting project for you, for you? You need to generate what is the most important thing. Sometimes they come with with very fake thing, <laughs> but and and you need to. And one of the coaching arts is actually to find out if it's real issue, or if it's just a fake issue. So so you need to ask about, you know, if 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 it's going to be solved, yeah, who will recognize it? How important it is from one to ten in in what you know in all, all, all kinds of and, and, and in the in the in the paper that I sent you out of asking good questions you have multiple questions you can ask for that you can you can use for that but there are multiple goals they can be goals related to the process like M4 so they they have the action plans and you can you should discuss these things but then there are things that are not in the action plan you know like. I have a couple that is divorcing in my team, you know, and I don't know what to do with it or whatever. Uh, you know, sometimes there are issues that are that put the project in danger. So, and and you need to ask about them. So that's that's like other, other, you know, the church whole whole team team related issues, and then there are personal personal development personal development issues of the church partner himself. And goals can be in both, in all three. Sometimes you address these, sometimes you address these, sometimes personal issues. So it's also about developing the church planter and his individual development. Sometimes it's about reading books or going and learning from someone else. Just, just think about, about him creatively. And, and the art of coaching is very much about 
what are the most important things here and and also what really leads to planting church and reaching people <laughs> so this this is the great art and and you, R stands for reality. Yeah, what's reality? What's going on? Just tell me more about it. Uh, you know, you need to understand understand what's uh, what's going on. Here are options. Yeah, op options. Just exploring what they could, they can do. What 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 different solutions could 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 be about it. And. Uh, very often here, coaches switch to mentoring and they suggest a lot of different things. But just be careful about it. If, if they will follow your suge only your suggestions, they will blame you for, for its failures. <laughs> so, so, uh, so even the language that you use, and that's a whole yeah, another training, how to do that, not to impose on them your solutions, but just Ask the right, yeah, think about the, be, the good questions rather than about the good solutions. So what are the best questions related to it that are not manipulating or leading questions? Uh, that's will, what will, what will be. So at the end, you decide, you know, they, I'm going to do this, so it's going to have a smart goals related to to, uh, to what you agreed that he is going to do in, with his team or with these other issues or in his personal life. So, and it, so yeah, 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 options. Goals are just the basic, this is the need, this is the goal uh, uh, that we need to focus on and the will is, uh, Defined goal in a smart way. So actually agreed smart uh, smart way of what will be the goal can be you know, I need uh, I, I, No, will is about what will happen. Yeah, what we agreed on that you are going to do by next month Yeah, so that's so that's what 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 will be yeah, it's <laughs> what 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 will be goal is about what I what what I see as, as, as a need, but it's not defined in a measurable way. Yet. So and then, then sometimes, uh, you know, it's good to, to set a date and time uh, for, for the next session. Just I, my experience is to ideally to have a regular time, like every second Monday, nine o'clock, just and, and have it planned for, for four, six months in advance, or maybe three, four months. Because then you just don't chase each other. That's my my, my experience. Uh, any questions to, to that? Of course, there are multiple ways how to take notes, but I keep it. Uh, I keep it. Yeah, as, as simple as possible. Uh, and that's another one that thing that we learned. If you are responsible for multiple coaches, and you we have eleven teams, maybe seven coaches. We need also accountability for coaches <laughs> because very often they just don't meet or something is wrong it, or uh, and, and you never know if you don't have any information and just call everybody, you know, have you met or not. So, so we have a system, uh, online actually system on the Growly platform, we have an online platform where all the content is, all the assignments, action plans uh, are uh, for individual teams. They, we have a section also for, for coaches, and they just are asked to write half of A4 page just on, on, on four things, uh, what they can celebrate, what are the main challenges, uh, what they agreed to be a progress, and how they evaluate the overall project from, from one to 10, you know, is there a crisis? And in, in our assessment, <coughs> We try to watch on, on the calling, calling of the church planter. You know, is what's what's his what's his calling? Is he called to church to plant churches? Uh, are there other people who recognize him as a church planter? And and if there is nobody, big red light, big problem. <laughs> is uh, is what is his type of calling? Some 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 planters are kind of a serial church planters. They 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 are not sustainers. They need to move on when they reach something. Some people are just planting in in one location and want to stay there. 
So, and that's, that's very often important. So that's the whole area, calling that it's integrity. Integrity, you know, are there, were there any issues, how honest they are, and they can be, uh, about, about themselves, and marital support. So it's calling, character is the second C, and that involves integrity and marital support. Marital support, spousal support, uh, spousal support. You know, very often if, you, if, you, if, the, if the wife hasn't accepted the role of being part of a church planting family, that's a big problem. That's a big problem. She doesn't have to be involved full time in the ministry, but at least she needs to understand what does it mean for the family. And, and, uh, and she needs to be at least generally support husband in, in the role. Although we have also women church planters in Europe, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, but that's, and if you see problems in that, be very careful. Yeah, it, can, it can be very costly, relationally and financially as well. There has to be some vision for the place or for the church that they are going to plant. And they need to have commitment, kind of a basic commitment to that. And very often in, in, in Europe, it's about five to seven years of commitment to one place. So without a calling that I really am going to stay and be here and do it, you know, it brings instability into the whole team because they, they can't commit to something where they don't see commitment from the leader. So, and the calling comes, becomes important, especially in the times of crisis, you know, when things don't go well. So was it really good who is God who is planting this church and called you to do it? It's, it's kind of an important question, or at least that's what we see. Very often if we, in the assessment, ask about this, and they say, I'm not sure, uh, I, I just want to, to lead it, but, uh, or, and they are not, not clear about their role, uh, their commitment, it's inherently fragile then. It's like, you know, and, and the team will find, soon find out. Uh, because the, the key for building a core group is actually to get people who can be on the same page with some same values and, and, and desire and, and finally some vision, but also with the same commitment in time, sometimes in money, you know, into each other, into relationships and values. And, and that's hard to do without, without vision. But generally the assessment that we use is based on a past behavior. So we are not asking about what you'd like to do in the future or what's, what's your vision or values, whatever. But we ask them, can you show us in, in your li life, maybe in three stages of your life, what, how you were starting new things? Because, and that is a kind of a basic supposition that past behavior is a good predictor for the future. And so especially in, in, the, in the third C, the, the skills, there are some skills, some 10, 10, 10 areas that, that we are asking about. And you actually have quite a lot of information about them. So, so if, you know, if, the, if there is no visionary leadership skill, you know, if they are not able to cast the vision, very difficult then for a communication. So, 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 so you can yeah, start in gathering, especially church planting in, in Europe means that they need to be entrepreneurial, they need to be starters. The fourth C we call chemistry. <laughs> chemistry is connected with chemistry in the team. Uh, very often church planters are evangelists uh, or extremely relational open, but they are hopeless in building the, the structure. <laughs> so, so if you have extreme evangelists with no, no, no skills in developing others, developing other leaders or, or whatever, in, in, uh, yeah, you, you need to look at their team and if there are others who complement them. Uh, who complemented. So is the chemistry in the team right? Is the chemistry, uh, is, 
is, the, is also the church planter fits into the model that he wants to use. Sometimes they choose model that just completely, you know, it's just completely different. Uh, so that's another thing. Sometimes also if the chemistry is right with the denomination and it's expect or expectations from the mother church. Uh, that so can, some kind of questions related to that. But these things can help you. And then on the personal level and personal development, you have a lot of stuff already going. Uh, that you can build on and you can just, yeah, develop them.